Welcome, Paul Rudwick again from Clark County. This is WIM training video number two. So in the first video, I talked a little bit about these, what these things are up here, and I went into picking a site and how to kind of navigate between this, Clark 2012, Clark 2012 SG, what the differences are. I'm gonna, for this site, I'm gonna use Clark 2012, and I'm gonna select my site. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect, um, especially for this example. Uh, it will matter where you pick your site. You can zoom in with these features over here. You can put your site name and your address and your city in if you want. They don't really matter for the modeling results, but they will show up in your report. So I'm gonna minimize this, and you can get back to it down here, or you can click on this again. I guess I can't, I have to click on that guy. If I X out of it, I can click up here. So I might even just X out of it, because I'm not that concerned with it. So now I'm gonna get into my schematic analysis. Now, this is where the real nuts and bolts of WIM are and the joys and terribleness of WIM. You can go on for ages. Uh, I will say that the program does work if set up properly, but it is super glitchy and relatively slow, so it can be extremely annoying. Um, all that to say, I'm going to do a really simple little model here, and I'm going to show you uh, what some of these basic uh, basic elements are, and then maybe another. I'll do another few videos to show you kind of some more in-depth detail. So, starting off, uh, this guy is your land use basin. And if you didn't remember how to do it, I'm going to delete this guy. Uh, delete element. So to get these guys over here, you just pick them and drag them. And then if you click on them, is kind of how you, or I guess you can right click on them. And that's kind of how you pick what they are. Now, this basin one, you can change the name if you want. I'm going to call, call this pre-developed, whatever you want to call it. I could have multiple of these if I wanted. You know, I don't, I can have as many as I want. Um, but essentially, there's two scenarios, and this kind of gets to the root of what stormwater mitigation is, or what what are we even trying to do here? Now, conceptually, what we are trying to do here, and I might even have a good example to show you. This is kind of exciting. In the state of Washington, um, we subscribe to what is called the mitigation formula. And I have coined this term so no one else will know what it means. So don't go using it everywhere. But essentially, it gets to the heart of what mitigation is. And mitigation is the concept of trying to account for or make up for the difference in damage caused by development. So pre-developed forest or a prairie or a lawn or whatever you're mitigating to is going to have a very different hydrologic uh, effect on a stream as a developed site. So wh why is that? What does that even mean? Basically, it means that when it rains on a forest or it rains on some grass, some water, most of it is going to go into the ground, get caught by the trees, evaporate. Very little is actually going to run off you know, in here. So it rains on here and not that much is going to run off. Maybe, you know, a very small percentage. We're talking 5% or less. If it's a prairie, maybe it's, you know, 10%, some, some, some number that you have to kind of figure out. Um, and the rate that it's going to run off is very, very low. It's going to be a very low runoff uh, flow rate. Whereas on a impervious site, there's flat services, Nothing is going into the ground. It's all going into your storm drains, into your pipes. Uh, very little, if any, is going to evaporate. So we're looking at you know 90 to 100% running off your site. And we're looking at much higher, faster velocities, higher flow rates running off. Uh, so you know, say there's a storm that is a you know two, one inch storm running off in this, most of this is going to go in the ground. Say it's a three inch storm, Still, most of this is going to go into the ground. Some will probably run off. 
Um, for a one inch storm or three inch storm, a lot more water is gonna run off for your site. So how do we account for this? How do we make up the difference? Because the goal is we want this site to not damage the stream any more than if it was a forest. That's essentially the goal. So we have this mitigation formula, which is these three types of mitigation plus our developed parking lot, site, whatever, has the same hydrologic equivalent as a forest. So that basically means that a stream, if water flows off of here and goes into a stream, or if water flows off of here and goes into a stream, it will not know the difference. A stream will be like, oh, this water feels like it's coming from a forest. But in reality, it could be coming from a forest or it could be coming from one of these sites with these three types of, of mitigation controls. Now, what are these mitigation controls? One is LID, essentially trying to infiltrate some water into the ground, uh, you know, a certain percentage of it. And usually it's the vast majority of the water, like 90% of the water. Water quality is the second piece, which is treating the water, you know, putting it through a filter or putting it through some sort of soil that can filter it. And the third type is flow control which essentially is trying to manage large storm events and hold the water and release it at a slower rate. So you're essentially building a big hole in the ground or a big underground pipe where all this water can go into and it can trickle off really slowly. Um, so that's essentially what it is. These three types of mitigation are going to make the hydrologic equivalent of a forest. And that was quite a long introduction. Um, so I'm gonna, that, might even be my video. I guess I'll talk about the pre-development and mitigated techniques for a little bit, and then I'll have another video. So pre-development is that always gonna be your forested condition. So theoretically, we can put in imperviousness, sidewalks, roads, and whatnot into our imperviousness, but we are trying to we're trying to put in what we want our stream to feel or to think is is draining into it. So that is almost always going to be a forested site. So over here we have perviousness and we have imperviousness. Previousness is going to be forest, pasture, lawn. And I think actually you can even put in some green roof. Uh, I'm not even sure what these are. I've never used them before. Essentially, these are going to be types of land uses that have a lot of, uh, you know, plants on them. And then their soil types, the corresponding soil types. So A, B soil basically means water can flow into the flow into it really well. Uh, you know, we're talking like gravelly stuff, sandy soil, you know, water goes into it and it flows through it really quickly. Type C is, uh, you know, kind of more clayey soil water. It can't water cannot percolate through it very quickly. Um, and you know, kind of closer to an imperviousness. And so if you think about it, if we're trying to match, if we're trying to match, if the stream's trying to think that it's the exact same condition that was there previously, it's to our benefit. I mean, to our benefit, when I say to our benefit, I mean, we're gonna have a smaller detention facility, a smaller flow control facility. The flow control is that big pond, the big pond that holds the water and it trickles out. We have a smaller flow control facility. When water is running off of our site faster in the pre-development condition. Now think about that for a second. We're trying to match this pre-development condition condition with our mitigated condition. So our pre-development condition is basically the baseline that we want our mitigated condition to equal to. So if we have lawn on our pre-developing condition. A lawn is a lot closer to a road or 
a sidewalk or a driveway or a parking lot than a forest is. On a forest, you're going to have much lower flow rates than you are on the lawn. Likewise, on AB soils, you're going to have much lower flow rates because it's more like a sand and a gravel. Water's going to hit it and flow through it instead of running off. On a C soil, you're going to you're going to be hitting this the C soil, which is like a clay, and it's going to run off that. It's going to be you know some water might go into the soil, but a lot of it's going to go off site. So this C soil is going to provide. We're going to have a lot higher flow rate coming in the pre-development condition. So our pond will need to be not need to be as big to match that pre-development condition. When I run this model, hopefully that will make sense. For our mitigated condition, one little snazzy trick I like to do, right click duplicate pre-developed. And that will just throw this on here. I guess it didn't totally duplicate it because in my pre-development, oh, I guess I did. So let me try this again. I'm gonna do this guy. I'm gonna say I have one acre of forest, C forest, so like a clay E forest, moderate. I'm going to delete this guy, and I'm going to duplicate pre-developed. And I got one forest of C in my mitigated. Now, in reality, I'm not going to have that. I'm actually going to have, uh, let's say I'm going to have 0.5. Oh, that's a roads. I'm going to have rooftops, 0.5. And actually, annoyingly, you have to hit zero here instead of just deleting. And I'm going to have parking at 0.5. So and I'm going to delete that. So I'm ending up with one acre of impervious in my mitigated condition. Actually, I'm going to make this mitigated. mitigated. So my pre-developed, I have uncheck these. I got one acre of pervious in its forest. Now in my mitigated, actually I'm gonna move these down a little bit so I can see them better. Surprised I can't adjust the boxes. So my pre-developed, I have one acre of pervious. In my mitigated condition, I have one acre of impervious. So how do I how do I match that? Again, I'm going to try to do flow control. This, um, this procedure is going to be to try to meet the flow control standard. So I'm going to put in a detention pond. And so that's the goal. This is going to be equal to this. I'm going to connect this element to here. So when I do that, I have three things to select. You can select groundwater if you want to. You don't have to. Surface flow is the main one that you need to worry about. Inner flow, you can look it up if you want. It's kind of this piece of flow uh, runoff that's between stormwater flow and groundwater. Kind of flows through the soil. Doesn't get all the way to the groundwater. I wouldn't worry about it too much. And then the main thing that we want to look at is at, wh at what point are we going to analyze? Wh where is our analysis going to occur? So it's going to occur at our point of compliance. And a point of compliance is essentially where are we doing our analysis? So I'm going to connect that to point of compliance one. I'm also going to connect that to point of compliance one. 
Now I can have multiple point of compliances if I want. I can I can also have I can do connect a point of compliance too as well. I'm actually not sure if this is connected to both or not. Well, for now, I'm going to connect it to two. I'm going to connect this one to two. Now, really what we want to do is we want point of compliance one to be equal to point of compliance one. So we want this pond and this mitigated uh, runoff to be have lower flow rates uh, than our pre-development condition. So how do we figure that out? How do we figure out what size pond we need? So I'm going to close these other boxes first. And this is essentially these two together got to equal that. And I just kind of have a general sense of what it's going to be. Um, I'm just going to I'm just going to put in the quick pond and see what happens. I put in the quick pond. It kind of punches in a bunch of values for me, which is kind of convenient. This three inch orifice I know is going to be way too big. Um, let's click this little facility diagram. It kind of helps. This is our pond. This is the riser. Maybe I'll do the. Um, well. I think I'm going to I'm going to cut it off for now. I think that's enough for right now. I'll do another video in a second.